That's next. Faces look ugly when you're alone. In the current hit movie, The Doors, and in life, Jim Morrison cut loose on drugs, women, and a lifestyle hell-bent on doing it all before he died. He did it all, and he died. But in a small corner of a cemetery in Paris, France, the celebration of excess goes on. Tried to run, tried to hide, break on through to the other side, break on through to the other side. Jim Morrison has finally broken through to the other side with his concert-ridden, acid-tripping Oliver Stone film. But while the movie ends here at the cemetery in Paris, Morrison's story of true fame really began here. Every day, uh, we sell uh, flowers to tourists from all over the world who have come to, uh, to pay respect to, uh, to the grave of Jim Morrison. And I came to show my mother to Morrison's grave. People are strange when you're a stranger. Faces like Marilyn Monroe, James Dean, and Elvis, Jim Morrison has become worth more dead than alive. Not that it matters to kids around the world who flock to his grave to paint graffiti, drink beer, and trip out around the tombstone of their beloved icon. They don't spend a lot of money, just a lot of time making a mess. I just came from Chicago this morning to come to Jim Morrison's uh, gravesite here. It's really been a hell of an experience. John Densmore, percussionist, 22 years old. <laughs> George drummer John Densmore remembers what the singer stood for while he was still breathing. He did represent breaking away from your parents and finding yourself. And uh, as long as there's people turning 17, and I still feel that sometimes, you know. Uh, I want to keep him alive. Jim was uh, this incredible looking guy who wrote brilliant words and died young. It's perfect ingredients for your James Dean mythology. But the drummer says it was old fashioned self destructive drinking and drugging that killed the star. There would be 10,000 people upstairs. You could hear them go, Jim, doors, doors. And we'd be down here in the dressing room, and Jim would be under the table. And we're supposed to go on. As his, uh, his self-destruction increased, it got less, and it was, uh, you know, not as fulfilling. I wasn't the lead singer, you know. That spotlight's real bright on that front man. At first, I was jealous. I, I thought, why is his head so big on the cover of the first album? Mm. Then I saw, you know, all that attention can be dangerous. So dangerous that Morrison finally dropped out, only after dropping on a few dozen extra pounds. He escaped to Paris, where his fame did not follow. Little did he know that it would be this European city where his fame would rise again in the form of this cemetery, this tombstone. He died here, but stories began to emerge almost immediately that Morrison wasn't really dead, and the mystery and the myth grew. This man, Hervé Mueller, claims he was one of the last to see Jim alive. He had gotten fat. He was, uh, he looked like a tramp, really. He didn't want help either. I mean, he was definitely self-destructive. Hervé says none of Morrison's friends know how he really died. The official story was he woke up at uh, 3 in the morning, 4 in the morning, uh, couldn't sleep, decided to have a bath, and uh, had a heart attack in his bath. But no matter how Morrison finally broke through to the other side, it was a death that has made lots of money for record men and a certain movie director. And it was a death that made a certain cemetery in Paris one of the hottest tourist spots in the world. Mm, rest in peace.